All right. I just started um, this tutorial and I was super inarticulate, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna mumble, I'm gonna be sick on camera, and it's gonna be wonderful. Good luck. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, liquid uh, masking fluid. So some questions on how to use that. Um, obviously, I haven't even checked to see if there are tutorials. I'm 100% sure there are. I could probably have just said, hey, look at some tutorials online, but I didn't want to. I'm going to make it. I'm going to show you how I use it, which is probably the wrong way, but you asked, so this is your fault. Okay, so let's say that it's a mermaid, right? And I'm making a mermaid tail. And let's say I am impulsive, if creative, and I'm like, okay, I'm starting my mermaid tail, right? And I'm just going to make it super um, cool and gradient filled, whatever. Oh no, I wanted to have some white scales on it. Well, now I'm stuck because I've already covered up all of my um, paper. So in order to get the paper um, look, which you can't, there's no paint on earth that's going to make it look like paper. Like, I guess you could cut out paper and like paste it on, but the next best thing is going to be to use um, like straight up white wash or watercolor. If you use gel pens, first of all, you have to definitely make sure that this is dry first, but you have to do that anyways for um, the paint to show through on it. If you decide to do that, um, this is my favorite one. It's the brightest that I found, but it still does not cope with straight up, um, sorry, it doesn't compete with straight up watercolor. So I have this stuff. Um, this stuff is Chinese white. Um, I think there's a new name for it now as well. Same kind of white. Uh, this is basically, this is heavy metal. So um, be careful when touching it to your skin and um, be careful with disposing it don't put it down your sink um okay so this is number one i'm just gonna use a pen since my pencil is messy all right so number one option is um white on top of existing paint option number two is to um mask off your uh mermaid tail and I'm just going to say um, there are some rules with uh, masking that I want to go over. Don't sniff it. I did that earlier. Don't do it. It's so bad for you. Don't sniff your paint. Come on. Second, use a um, pencil or a brush that you could throw away because this is basically glue. You're using glue. And it's so, this stuff is so. Um, thick. I think it's old. It's thick. Okay. So, let me just get this together. Um, what you're going to want to do is, ugh, I shudder to use this, honestly. It's so thick. If you want to get thinner, um, lines, I would recommend using like a needle or something really narrow. It doesn't have to be a brush because basically you're just dragging this glue on. You're not really painting with it. As long as the line is solid, I mean, you're not blending it, you're not doing anything too fancy. You're just creating a line. Okay? So, things I've noticed is I have to dip my brush very frequently in it because um, it dries super fast. I will say that Winsor & Newton is my favorite one to use because the other ones, um, they cling really hard to the paper. Oh my gosh, I just stuck my fingers in it. How do I stick my finger in every bit of paint and glue I find? It's shocking. Okay. There's some more. Um, Lost my train of thought. 
Oh yeah, the other types I have used, um, they cling to the paper and that's not what you want because usually you take this stuff off at the end of the painting and the last thing you want to do is finish a beautiful painting and then like rip the paper. So we'll talk about appropriate ways to take that off in a second. Um, please excuse my hands that are coming apart at the seams. It is very dry here. Okay. Um, so that's number two. We'll get back to that and let it dry because you absolutely have to make sure it's dry before you paint over it. Okay, method number three is um, called planning ahead. And that is the hardest thing for me in the world. So it's not my fave, but it's something I've learned to do. Um, the downside of doing it this way is that you are going to have to account for... Um, the nature of watercolors and by that I mean watercolor paint does tend to pool so if I am planning ahead and let's say I wanted to put scales right here right so I'm like all right I know that I want this here and I want um, this here and I know that the scales kind of do this, right? The problem with doing it this way, and I wouldn't say it's exactly a problem, especially not in this context where, you know, being a little bit sloppy kind of helps with the organic feel. But, um, one of the problems is that because of the nature of watercolors, because it tends to pull, it's going to um, never look like uh, these were put on top or um, that this is a design element that um, is separate from the watercolor. Like, you'll get heavier ink here than you would here. So it kind of looks like these are two different elements instead of the same surface, right? It looks like it's two different surfaces. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly. The point I'm trying to make is that, um, or like for instance, if this was water, let's say I was trying to do a pattern on top of water, having it pool and get darker around the edges makes it look like it's not um, lying on top of the water. It looks like it's separating the water into segments. Um, it's not a bad look. I don't mind it, um, personally, but some people do, um, especially if they're going for something very smooth and, um, calculated looking, and then I'm just wandering around doing whatever feels good, so I usually end up with something kind of chaotic, and I don't even mind, but, um, yeah, that's the point I was trying to make, is that planning ahead, you can keep that white in, but, uh, it might not give you the same look that using masking fluid would. Okay, so that's all I have to say about that for now. I'm gonna let the masking fluid dry before I go over it. And um, actually, let me let me talk about this one real quick because this is completely bone dry and that's great. All right, so for white, um, I'm using, I already like poured over, out some like white watercolor. I'm reactivating it now. And I'm gonna draw scales on top. And you know, at the best of times, it gives you this nice crisp line. And that is not always the case, but when it does, it's wonderful. Cause you have to get it like a little bit white so that, or a little bit wet so that it um, spreads well but not so wet that it um, doesn't look opaque. And so that's great. Now you have like a little bit of um, a design element in here. It's fine. It's not the same as this though. This is bright. It glows. This is kind of eh. But both have their place and both are useful to know. Um, the second question that I was asked by you guys was, about um, water pens. 
water brushes, sorry. So water brushes are um, really nice to travel with. You basically take the lid off, you dip it in um, water, and you squeeze it, and then when you release it, it sucks up the water. To keep filling it, you point it upwards so that the air is on top, you squeeze it, and then you dip it in, and then you pull it to suction in the water. Pretty straightforward. Before you travel with it, you should shake it, make sure that it doesn't drip any water, and always put the lid on top. This one is missing its lid. Um, to release the water, you're just going to squeeze it a little bit, and it's going to give you the water you need. I usually pull straight from the pan onto the page and mix the paint on the paper, right? Because it just it makes it easier. Now, one of the good things about having a water brush is that you don't need to travel with a um, like this Dixie cup of water. Um, when you need to clean your brush, you just use a paper towel, you wipe it off, you squeeze it to release water, and you keep wiping it until the water comes out clear. And then you've cleaned your brush and you're ready to go again. So this is a really good tool. Um, that's my tutorial on how to use a water brush. It's pretty straightforward. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's great. So I'm going to go back into this now that this is dried. And we're going to talk about... Um, Actually, I should have done this first because now we have to wait for it to dry again before pulling off the uh, masking fluid, right? So, I could use um, a blow dryer to make it dry faster, but um, let's see, do I have anything else to talk about before I do that? Because one of the things you do want to make sure you do is you absolutely want to make sure it's dry before you start pulling it off. If the paper is damp, it will rip. <sighs> so that's my rant. Um, actually, you know what? I I started this um, tutorial already and it was total failure because I can't use words. I don't know which words to use. I'm not feverish. I'm just not feeling good. So um, this is called a frisket. It's soft, it's nice, it's not gonna hurt your paper. It is going to be able to pull up some of the um, masking fluid though. So you wanna be very gentle and careful. And this stuff wasn't applied well, I'll be honest. So it didn't give me a very nice crisp line. And if it had, you would have a nice crisp line, and that would be amazing. Uh, to your time sufficiently, I'm just going to <laughs> go over this, and I'm going to show you how I would do it with my bare fingers. Now, like I said before, the frisk gets great. Um, I don't know if I would do my bare fingers um, normally, because uh, my fingers are always dirty. I'm always dragging them through the paint and getting them absolutely filthy but ideally this will come off without a hitch you won't have too many um, like escaped paints in between and it'll give you this nice gradient that you can see around here without like affecting the design on top so those are three ways of doing it um, <laughs> that's all I've got anyways thanks for watching bye